The current demands of pensions and health care on our budget are simply unsustainable. We'll continue to work with our employee unions to lessen the financial burden in the future and with legislators to encourage greater efforts at pension reform. This chart will show you what we typically refer to as our structural deficit. Our expenses, including employee salaries and benefits, are larger than our revenues, and the gap is growing and unsustainable. The numbers don't lie. The majority of our budget is in operations, and as I mentioned, 80% of that operating budget are our hardworking employees. To get this structural deficit right-sized, we need to get back to basics. That means we need to agree on the services that are core to our city. I assume you would all agree that the list would probably include emergency response and public safety, police and fire, and some level of public works for road maintenance. I would venture to say that all other areas need to be considered to determine whether those services can be provided by the private sector or some other entity more efficiently and effectively. This is not a pleasant undertaking, but one of absolute necessity. Nothing is or should be off the table. And I'll say today that I'm not afraid of touching the third rail because we are in too desperate of times to not acknowledge the elephant in the room in this discussion. Very soon it will be absolutely imperative that this community take a hard look at the public safety portion of this discussion. Simply put, the funds spent to operate separate fire districts and police departments are not an efficient use of our tax dollars. I understand the political, logistical, and provincial arguments that will be used to dilute the discussion, but the clock is ticking toward a day of reckoning, and we need to make some tough decisions sooner rather than later. There are two specific strategies I would like to explore to address the financial future of city government that I want to call your attention to today. Last year, I recommended the formation of a group to look at ramping up the discussions that were taking place between the city and the county towards increasing shared services. You may have heard in a news conference a couple weeks ago that a group has, in fact, been meeting and making good progress in this area. Under the leadership of retired Caterpillar executive Doug Crew, with assistance from the Institute for Principal Leadership at Bradley, in a group of enthusiastic and engaged volunteers, the group has taken the name Pass Forward Peoria Area Shared Services. Their charge is to explore areas of potential duplication, consolidation, or other efficiency opportunities within our multiple levels of government. There are some areas of low-hanging fruit that could be achieved in the near future, such as a merger of our election departments. Other complex areas, such as police and fire, will take years of discussion and planning. But we have to begin those discussions and ask the hard questions that have been avoided until now. To that end, uh, today, I challenge Sheriff McCoy and Chief Settings Guard to lead the discussion of a combined county-city police force. I do so in full confidence that these two outstanding law enforcement professionals and leaders in our community will initiate a serious, thoughtful, and results-oriented dialogue that strives to maintain public safety while eventually combining resources. There are a few people in the area that I would rather entrust this mission to. Considering existing contracts and other obstacles, I would like to see a target to achieve consolidation in maybe five years. Is it doable? I guess we'll wait and see what the pro professionals have to say. Second, I'm proposing the creation of a volunteer task force comprised of local leaders to take a hard look at city services and answer several fundamental questions. Is the service a core function of municipal government? If it is, can it be provided more efficiently by a private nonprofit or other government entity? If it cannot be outsourced, is there a way to enable the service to be re-engineered internally to increase efficiency and lower costs? 
And how can the city better utilize technology to improve service delivery and save tax dollars? Similar panels have been used successfully in the past by leaders from both political parties, such as the Grace Commission under President Reagan and the National Performance Review under President Clinton. I envision the panel to be comprised of people who deal with these issues on a day-to-day -day basis in the private or nonprofit sectors. I envision engaging representatives from Caterpillar, someone with technological expertise, someone representing small business, a human resource professional, and a representative from our local labor unions. I want to emphasize, this exercise should not be viewed as punitive towards our employees, although I'm sure some may view it that way. But my friends, again, there is simply no other way. I would like the commission to report back and I'm planning an aggressive deadline of July 1st. My hope is that at the end of this process we have a city government that will be smaller, more focused, less expensive, more customer driven, more efficient and technologically based and one with flexibility and creativity to meet the challenges that lie ahead. And both of these strategies to reshape city government we're using the resources of our community as volunteers to help devise solutions. This is a strategy that we've used in Peoria countless times in recent years with good results. It really is a blessing to live in a community with people who are so willing to give back to that community and serve in a volunteer capacity. And speaking of volunteer spirit, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you a quick update on one of the most important initiatives that our community has undertaken. Peoria Promise. With leadership from the Board of Directors and our Executive Director, Tara Gerstner, Peoria Promise Foundation has supported over 800 students since its beginning in the fall of 2008. Each year the number of students has increased, demonstrating the need for such a fundamental program. This past fall semester alone, over 350 Peoria students received financial assistance, allowing them to work towards a college degree. In 2010, Peoria Promise set a record for fundraising by bringing in more than $550,000, including $400,000 in general donations. Why is Peoria Promise so important to our city? Economic development is the key and is what sets our program apart. The motivation of a full scholarship to Illinois Central College not only encourages students to graduate from high school, but also allows them the opportunity of a college degree. 70% of students that attend ICC stay in our community. Our economy is directly influenced by the level of education of the workforce. Peoria Promise is designed to create a better educated local workforce and corresponding income level increases. To reduce the high school dropout rate and increase attainment of college degrees. Increase tax revenues through population growth. And today, College-going rates among low-income and minority young people are far below the national average. As a result, the degree attainment rate for African Americans is 37% below the national average, while the rate for Hispanics is less than half of the nation figure. Low educational attainment has become a defining characteristic for our nation's most economically challenged communities. The jobless rate for those who have dropped out of high school is nearly three times that of college graduates. And with 63% of jobs in the United States expected to require post-secondary education by 2018, communities with low levels of education attainment are unlikely to experience strong economic recovery. Peoria Promise is designed to address these disparities and we should all be proud of our efforts to do so thus far. Education Secretary Arne Duncan attended an education symposium in Peoria on April 10th last year and said, I think we have lost our way in education and we are paying the price for that. We need to educate our way to a better tomorrow. Peoria Promise is one of the ways that we can educate our way to a better tomorrow for our kids. Many thanks to all of our donors led by our corporate leader in so many areas of our city, Caterpillar Inc. And also, uh, did you know that Gary Uftring donated that beautiful 1974 Corvette convertible to Peoria Promise? Be sure to stop by and purchase a raffle ticket after lunch. 
The completely restored car will be raffled off on April 9th, and we're only selling 2,000 tickets. So get yours today, and be sure to thank Gary Uftring. All proceeds from the raffle will go to Peoria Promise students, and I call on all of Peoria's business leaders, the group sitting here today, the group who will benefit the most from a more capable workforce, to join Gary and join the Peoria Promise Board and devise ways to help fund this very essential program. This is an unbelievable community, folks. We all need to do our part to continue to make Peoria and the surrounding area an outstanding place to live and work and raise our families. Make a resolution to get involved in some area of our community to make it better. And here's just one more example of a group making a difference in our community. Have you heard about Adopt-A-Block? Southside Mission and its dozens of partner churches have adopted 60 blocks on the south side of Peoria providing door-to-door -door assistance that includes food baskets, service coordination, and even home repairs. Their Hope Builders teams provided new roofs and other big-ticket home repairs for 47 homeowners on the south side last year alone. Has your church adopted a block? Because it's not too late. Councilman Gully and I had an opportunity to visit with Southside's Executive Director, Philip Newton, and his assistant executive director, Minister Craig Williams, a few weeks ago. And I was very inspired with, with the mission that they've undertaken. I urge you to stop by their table after lunch and get more information about how you or your church can adopt a block and participate in an outstanding community project. Their table is right in the back, right before you go outside the door, so make sure and you stop by. And think about all the other groups making a huge difference in our community. Riverside Church and the Dream Center, Carl Cannon's Choices Group, Peoria's Litter Committee, our Race Relations Commission and Sustainability Commission, chaired by Dr. Alkafaji from Bradley. Major progress through Superintendent Granita Lathan's leadership at District 150. And so, so many more. What are you doing, what are you doing to make our community stronger? We need everyone to do a little extra to keep the ball moving forward in the Peoria area. I'd say look out in 2011, friends. The beginning of a legacy project with the Peoria River, Riverfront Museum and Cat Visitors Center, groundbreaking on a new Marriott Convention Hotel attached to the Civic Center to capitalize on our Civic Center investment and realize a lot of new business to Peoria. This project will begin a transformation of Main Street in downtown. We also have new additions to our first-class medical community, the Cancer Research Building at the University of Illinois College of Medicine, the Jump Trade Sim Lab and Convention Center at OSF St. Francis, continued growth and expansion at Methodist Medical Center and Proctor, impressive new capital projects at Bradley University as Bradley University as they continue their renaissance. And you'll see some exciting new retail venues in the beginning of a comeback for new residential construction in Peoria. And don't forget the warehouse district. We should expect a vibrant year with some well-planned projects starting and others coming to fruition. And just one last thing before I conclude. We have an important election coming up. and We'll elect five at-large city council people in April. We've been very fortunate in past years to have outstanding groups working on the council that work very hard on behalf of their constituents and have the true interests of our people at heart. I've said many times that good government is not a given. Please take the time to examine the candidates and support those who have the best interests of the city at heart. Those who don't offer empty slogans and false choices. Those who want to move the city forward and work with others through some difficult times to maintain this city as the place that we love and call home. I urge you the business community, to have a specific plan at your office or place of business to encourage 100% participation in the April elections. Do your part to get out the vote. It's critical to a strong local government. 